Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Novo2 and thank you for watching this video. This is the Hive walkthrough walk breakdown of 300 below. Be sure to check the timestamps. The video will be broken up very specifically into important information and the generalization of it all. I'll be doing a couple of things in this video uh, per usual. First, I will be doing a uh, why do we care about this hive? What's special about this hive? Sort of like the sort of like a feeling summarization of this particular hive. Next, I'll be talking about the actual layout of the hive, the layout of this hive, the pattern of how it's designed, what we're going to be experiencing, and I have sort of like a generalization of the big picture here of how we should be moving through this particular map. Then I will actually be going through the map, talking about the little details, showing you exactly this is how the map is laid out. We can do this here and do that here, but this is, I find, to be most more, uh, easier. Or this is a really good holdout spot. The specifics and the little details, so you can familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with the exact specifics of this hive. I'll also be showing you the a secret achievement if you're inter interested in that as well it'll be time stamped nice and neat more towards the end so let us begin why do we why do we care about 300 below this is actually a very special hive very special hive it's the special for the same reason that the cut is special if you haven't seen my my cut hive th walkthrough i recommend you go see it at least for the beginning part of it but let me tell you a little story let's say you're in a mission you're in a mission and it's all gone wrong. Everything's falling apart. You're low on ammo, you're low on health, you're low on grenades. You don't think you're gonna make it. You have the fear, the fear in your heart. Then you see that purple glow <laughs> and the scream of agony off in the distance and you know, oh, it's a hive entrance. And you think to yourself, we're probably gonna die in this mission, but if we take this hive entrance out right now, we'll have an opportunity to reset, bring, pa bring back dead teammates, restock, uh, re-ammo up, right? And have another opportunity to keep the run going without losing a continue. In that particular scenario, what hive do you want to see on the other side? Well, it's 300 below. It's also the cut. The cut is insane as far as how easy it is to get out of. The cut and the 300 below are great hives to get. If you're taking a hive entrance... Out of desperation, you're hoping for 300 below or the cut. And they're sort of different in how and how uh, how we like them or why we like them. The cut is super duper easy. Incredibly easy. You walk down a hallway into a choke point, into a holdout spot. You hold off one horde and then you're good to go. But you get little opportunity to loot and no chance for totems. 300 below, the path is not quite clear cut. The path is a little more uh, scary, more angles, it's not quite a hallway, there's verticality involved, so going through 300 below quickly is a little more dangerous, probably going to take you a little bit more time to get out of 300 below, but relatively fast to get out of, especially if you'll take the path that I end up showing you in particular, it can be very, very quick. So the 300 below is not quite as safe as the cut and not quite as fast, I find, but some of the strongest holdout points that we'll be able to take advantage of here at 300 below also has good loot, opportunity for totems as well as opportunity for warp chests. The 300 below is sort of this blend of risk reward where we still have a relatively easy extraction with a significantly higher chance for extra loot compared to the cut. But we love 300 Below because it's a relatively easy mission to get out of rather quickly. You can sort of set your own pace. Now, 300 Below is organized in, well, circles, above circles. It's basically a cylinder, and uh, there's floors. We're on the main floor here, and then you'll drop down once onto what I like to call the door floor. <laughs> I'm a dad. And um, on the, uh, or the first drop down. It's easier to consider them my first drop down, right? So we're on the main floor, the safe room floor. We'll drop down once, get opportunity to loot, and then we can drop down a second time onto the second floor or the second drop down floor. Opportunity to loot, and then there's a third drop down, and that third drop down is the final floor. There's potential for an ogre spawn, uh, the least amount of loot, but the ability to safely get to the extraction point without taking fall damage. 
but it's just level stacked on top of level. So the specifics here are basically it's a circle, and for the most part there's always going to be a path on the outer edge of it all, with some inner paths sort of cutting the circle into a pie, so to speak. And so you can get from one side to the other faster if you go through the center, but there'll be more angles, more path, places that you can get flanked by ridden and things like that. And in order for you to get from one floor, floor to the next, you have to drop down basically what are holes. But there's multiple holes per level, two or three. I'll be showing you exactly which holes you're going to want to be dropping down. Specifically, there are some options as far as what hole you want to go down depending on what you want to do, depending on where some uh, inner hive entrances spawn and things like that. But for the most part, there is a meta location where you want to drop down for each floor to give you the best opportunity for loot, uh, holdout points, and the uh, and proximity to the extraction point. So I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing that's uh, that I should mention about 300 below that's quite interesting about it is that the majority of the loot is on one half of the circle, which actually really adds to the easiness of this particular hive because the safest the safest path to go in 300 below is also the path that has the majority of the loot, which is quite nice. And so I'll be showing you that path specifically here. So let's get into the hive itself. We open up in sort of just a very general sort of hallway area. This is a this is a safe room that we can get back into. Some of the other safe rooms you can't. You get stuck or you drop down and you can't go back. So in worst case scenario, bad things are happening. A horde event is happening or something. You need to hold off. You can still fall back to the safe room. Get a decent choke point to hold off against the horde. You can sort of see there's, you know, little bits of left and right here. We are in veteran mode for the ease of the walkthrough. Uh, for the most part, though, you can sort of see not a bit tre tremendously hard design, but there is opportunity for zombies to sort of sneak up on you. And then immediately to the right here, we have this little area. And there's usually not a whole lot down here, uh, other than like some copper spawns. If you have scavenger cards, sometimes some uh, items, accessories can spawn over here. Just keep in mind, though, that this is also a nice choke or holdout point where everything has to run at you from over here. You can hold off at the back of the cave. Now, if you really wanted to do some sort of weird speedy zoom zoom thing, you wanted to run through all of this and not open this up, you can actually make this jump over here. But if you do that with bots, it breaks the bots. The bots won't move. They stop moving. They need this. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, there's really no reason not to just pull down this webbing. Keep in mind, right, if you are opening up this webbing and there's zombies really close to the other side of it, zombies can run through this. And so if you run up to a webbing and start removing it without checking what's on the other side, sometimes zombies will run up and punch you while you're removing it. But one thing that you can also do is just shoot through the webbing real fast, aggro everything on the other side of it, and then it'll run towards you, you deal with it, and then you can comfortably open this up. And now we're on the first bulk of it. The rest, the rest of the map is going to pretty much look like this. We're now in sort of the... We're in the circle now. We're in the cylinder of this mission. We can go right, we can go left, and we can go straight. And when it comes to dealing with this all, right is the correct path. So I will show you that last. So we can explore the rest of this floor. The the inner the innards of all of these missions typically offer you the ability to go alternative ways here. For the most part, though, ig ig ignore ignore the center. There's really no reason to go in there. The right half of each of these circles of each of these floors will have the majority of the loot. And so, going center or going left, you actually really never need to do that at all, which is quite nice quite interesting. Nothing to worry about. Right, but over here, nothing really going on. But there is one important thing use that. that I would like to show you after we hold off against this horde event here. I'm going to spray paint the side of this guy right here. Just so we have a point of reference. Because there is a particular hive entrance that is right below us right now. And so if you wanted to 
get out of this mission super duper ultra fast, but do so by having to go through an inner hive, you have the option to do so. Or if you wanted to particularly like loot one or two totems and then go for more totems and more warp chests at the inner hive. While we're standing over here, listen for the scream. Listen for the scream. You hear that scream? That sort of echoey. Over there. Can't really quite ping it, but there is a inner hive right there that we can hear while we're up here. And so I'm going to spray well, paint this uh, minecart, and I'm going to show it to you later because there's an opportunity to jump down safely right next to that inner hive and get out really quickly. Now all of the floors of our cylinder here have this elevator shaft as as one of the walls. And this is where we can potentially get out of this mission incredibly fast. What's that? Now jumping from this height is a uh, death. <laughs> and landing on that pillar, it well it hurts. One interesting thing though is that if you have armor plate, armor plate will block the damage of your fall. So if you have armor plate, you can actually just jump down and get right out to our extraction point, which is over there. If that's something you wanted to do. But notice here that there is loot here. This is the only bit of loot that's sort of in the center-ish, right? But it's actually safer and easier to get here from the right side of this particular circle. Okay, now this path here, that's back into the center. We'll head over here. What's that? Oh. Oh. Good thing we're in veteran mode. All right, but on this particular floor that we're on, this is the primary bit of loot that you're going to be encountering here. Each of the floors, I think, have some webbing on them, which has potential for loot behind them. For the most part, though, the loot's pretty minimal. Now, as far as drop downs go, we have this ladder right here. This ladder over here. And we passed it earlier over here. Those are our three drop down locations. This location is going to be the where you want to drop down if you want to get to that inner hive quickly. But this drop down will put us on the wrong side of the map as far as where all the juicy loot is. This, this drop down is okay. It puts us relatively close to one of the juicy loot locations and a totem spawn. But... Uh, there's it's pretty dang nice wide line. here there's usually lots of zombies over here as well as zombies behind this wall it's relatively safe but uh, it can be rather dangerous because if a horde event does trigger or you trigger a snitch or somebody gets grabbed by a sleeper um, there's there's not a whole lot of places to zombies go from this point from this point uh, when you drop down now, I just want to example, you, example to you what the correct path would be. We, we remove the webbing, we enter here, and I recommend you just go right. Fight your way right. Ignore all that, right? There's not a whole lot going on. And this is part of the reason why. Once we're here, this is a hallway. A relatively good hallway. The only way for the Ridden to get here is from running this way, or the Ridden will jump from here to here. Sort of giving us a hallway that we can split two and two. Two players can look here. Two players can look here. Pretty solid holdout point. It's actually the best holdout point on this particular floor. But this is our meta drop down. This is where we want to drop down. This drop down is going to put us relatively close to a holdout point as well as the loot. This is the door, the floor of doors. Look at this. We can get over here, blow up this door. Now there is knockoff potential, but now we can get over here and hold this doorway. We got this nice little vertical coffin going on, you know what I'm saying? Zombies do spawn right there. But an easy door to throw a Molotov at. Somebody to melee with. Right, you got a melee character. Great location for them to melee. The good old fashioned natural doorway. Not only that, opportunity for a warp chest to spawn and other loot as well. Right, and this is just right where we're at the. Uh, right next to our drop off point. These scratch marks denote that we can potentially climb back up or that you can make a particular jump though they're not Something's over there. those sort of like bird poopy scratch marks represent the same thing here Take this. Oh, thanks. but now our other door right we're just right here this one particular drop off we have a second door that we can get to and this second door 
has opportunity for another warp crate, as well as a great holdout point, just in general. One important thing to note about this bridge is that this bridge can blow up. This is a blow upable bridge, similar to uh, Call to Arms, where if you throw any sort of explosive, this bridge will collapse. Though it will leave you this piping to walk along. So even then, you can blow this bridge up on purpose, and the Ridden will be forced to run along this piping as if, as if it was a hallway. Though keep in mind, things can spawn out of there and stuff like that as well. We've also got some nice high ground here to deal with mutations from a distance. I'm ready. You ready? Let's kick ass. And so where do we go from here? I'm going to show you the rest of this particular floor, because it's important. And then we'll drop off. Right. So here's the other drop off point that we passed by. And this is the potential totem spawn right here. I'm not going to go super detailed on all of the particular totem spawns. I'm play the map, it's fun to find them. But RNG is one of those things where there's possibly totem spawns that I've never even seen before or noticed. Or just never got. Right. But notice how sort of like wide open this particular floor is. Just how, how open it is in general. Sort of a nightmare to walk into if a horde event were to trigger. But similar to the floor above us, the center is just sort of the uh, cuts cuts this particular map in half. The center will take us to our elevator shaft. And again, this is a height that's still high enough to deal damage. High enough to still do damage. But if you were to drop off right here from this ledge to here, it's not the end of the world. It's like 30 or 40 points of damage or something like that. I forgot to write it down. Forgot to write it down. Don't jump down here. It's more damage. Something's jump on top open. of the elevator. It's not a big deal. And so if you... At this point, you can loot and scoot those two rooms and then just pop some pain pills, eat the damage, and be right on your way out. So again, offering us the opportunity to loot with a relatively fast escape. Going this way takes us back to our two doors. And each floor has these weapons with opportunity for loot, so be sure to check them. If you're looking for all the totems and things like that. If you're really looking to loot Goblin, goblin there's opportunity to do so. There is our spray-painted mine cart. Right, there's our spray-painted mine cart. There's that other drop-down. So the floor, this is it. This is the entirety of the floor. Right, so if we wanted to potentially get out as quickly as possible, even faster than going to the ladder, the actual extraction, we can get to this minecart, drop down, drop down right here. Notice that there's this room right here with copper in it. You can get into this room with copper if you have enough movement speed or if you make the jump from here, but it's hard. It's really, really, really hard. But if you sort of hug this wall, like crouch walk hug this wall, as you fall, you will sort of hit this ledge and then hit the ground. And you won't take any fall damage, because otherwise you would. This is just high enough. Just high enough to take fall damage. So there is a way to sort of like just scrape your body against this little mountain here and get down safely. From this particular level, you can get down safely and then just be right at be right at that particular hive entrance if you're interested in doing that. You can also pop the nest from up here. This nest is optional. This nest le leads to. Uh, leads to a loot opportunity as well as a potential totem spawn. But where do we actually want to drop down? Because dropping down over there is actually like in the middle of a whole hot mess. It's not the worst place to drop down, but... Lose anyone? The place that I recommend dropping down is actually over here. We just stick to the right side of the map. It's nice and safe and comfy. We're supposed to here, again, like we're really in that same room. There's the nest, Something's or the right. node right there, and the and the uh, inner hive entrance is right over there. Okay, and it sort of, like, just plops you right in a big old... Plops you, like, in the middle of a room, basically. Not ideal to hold off against the horse. So I like dropping down right here. Even right here, we're relatively safe. Lots of choke points. I think we'll climb up here. You can actually get right here and split it two and two and two and two right here in this corner. And it puts us down to right next to this Something's drop point open. right here. 
Recognize the bridge. The bridge is blow upable. Blow upable. So beware of throwing grenades on it if teammates are standing on the wooden parts of that bridge because it will it will break and they will fall off. Alright, this is the floor though with the optional with the optional hive. And that op or yeah, the optional nest. And that optional nest is actually the last bit of loot on this particular map for the most part. There's some loot on the flow below it flow floor below us, but I've had, I tend to find the loot's pretty lackluster. So if you want to loot basically a third area or a fourth area, you can do this nest as an option if you're feeling really, really strong. But as you can see, we like to just drop down, keep to the right side of the map, because we'll get two or three opportunities to loot. Relatively comfortable place to hold off against the horde. And if we stick to the right, you can, you, you can see just how close we were how close we were to the the actual extract. Because now that we're at this point, we can comfortably jump down without taking any fall damage. Because we're just right here now. So we can actually just drop down and be on our merry way. And on no hope mode, this ogre spawn is guaranteed. Where an ogre will spawn on the bottom floor. It's guaranteed to happen in no hope mode. On veteran mode, it doesn't always happen. We'll pepper him up a little bit for my new boss. We'll go through this floor now. And th and notice, like, where did those zombies come from? Were they? How did they aggro onto me? I think because I ran over here, shot my gun, those zombies aggroed. So that's a big part of this map being sort of more difficult is because there's verticality above and below you. Where if a horde event were to trigger, zombies could... Oh, God. Zombies could spawn above us and, and fall down on top of us, or climb up from below us, and things like that. Here's our hive entrance. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of particularly good holdout points here. But I do want to remove one of these webbings. Just to point out, like, here's like a cave. Here's a little shallow, narrow holdout point for us to take advantage of. And so I would recommend actually just holding out here, because you can have two players sort of split it. Two look this way, two look that way for the most part, right? The players looking this way can even be in here if they want to. We're going to pop this nest, though. As you can see where the nest goes over there. The last bit of loot opportunity. There's also an additional drop down point right here. And like I think like a weapon spawn, or some loot spawn right there. Take this. Let's we'll pop this nest and see what's behind it. Go into our little hidey hole. I think if somebody is standing, sleeper dodge or stinger dodge. Yeah. You can see that zombies were spawning out of this particular entranceway. You'll need a vision of this tunnel right here, so that won't happen. So team coordination will be quite nice. Playable. Players can hold right here on this angle, and if they get uh, overwhelmed or something like that, they can retreat into the cave. The other two players can hold in this cave and have a nice long hallway to deal with everything. We'll blow up the nest. Now, notice that this nest has a... Uh, I've fallen down here, not realizing that the nest was going to be a jump. <laughs> jump over it. Opportunity for loot and a totem. That's about all you got going on over here. All clear. Notice the jump jump downs now. The the lack of loot on this final floor sort of mitigates the importance of any particular drop down here. So let's just drop down, uh, and we're gonna work our way around here. And this is the most important drop down simply because there is a chance for a totem to spawn right here as well as some other loot. For the most part though, we'll just walk around. That's the broken bridge right there where we came in originally. Nothing over here as far as doors go. You can see nothing available for loot or anything like that going on. All right, no loot here. Can't get over this. There's this right here, but I've never seen any loot here. Sort of a sucky holdout point where you can go two and two as far as splitting it all. 
I'm going to show you where the hidden achievement is right now. If you're not interested in that, skip to the next check or timestamp. Here's the hidden achievement. There. Here's the hidden achievement behind this minecart. There's some other potential loot. Keep in mind that we have Cost of Avarice, so these extra boxes are a result of that. And that's where we dropped down originally. So, as far as dropping down to get extra loot, and that and the room with the nest is the only good drop down as far as being right next to potential totem spawn. Let's get out of here before I die. Other than that, there's usually not a whole lot of loot going on down here. And there's an ogre that you have to deal with. Now that we're here, we're at the very, very end. We can deal with all this. There's loot over there. Use a lot of the times. You jump up. And get our way out. Oh. And here's the way out. And we're good to go. Let's go. So that was 300 below. Opportunity to loot as well as get out really, really fast. Uh, important to know where the good drop downs are because uh, you might drop down into a bad room. You want to sort of stick to the right side of the map in general because that's where all the loot is, as well as the opportunity for all of the other good drop downs and as well as the opportunity to get out quickly and safely for the most part. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the future.